Welcome to another episode of Airquake Whiskey Studies, and in this video, going to do a review of three different uh, Tomatin bottlings from this sample pack that I picked up in Scotland. Uh, that's the Tomatin 12-year-old, the 14-year-old, and the Legacy. So this video is part of a series that I'm doing in studying for the Council of Whiskey Masters for the level two uh, certified whiskey specialist. Now, I need to do a study on Tomatin Distillery for this series. However, I've already reviewed several uh, Tomatin whiskeys that I absolutely think are, are just fantastic. I have the Tomatin Fino cast, the Manzanilla cast, and the cast strengths. So for this study, I wanted to do a, a different bottling from Tomatin, but I had some samples that I brought back from Scotland, so I thought rather than buying another bottle, I'll review those and, and share those as part of uh, this current study. So I visited Scotland in June 2018 and July 2019. In 2019, in July, I uh, visited Tomatin Distillery. Usually when I visit a distillery, I like to pick up a uh, distillery only edition. However, uh, the bottle that I wanted to get from Tomatin Distillery was not available because the Scotch test dummies had just visited, talked about the whiskey, and consequently the distillery sold out. So I thought, you know, I didn't want to leave empty handed, you know, after doing a tour of the distillery. So I picked up this little kit uh, that contains the Legacy, the 12 year old, and the 14 year old. But before I get into these whiskeys, let me tell you a little bit about the history of Tomatin Distillery and the production. Tomatin Distillery is located in the village of Tomatin, about 25 miles south of Inverness in the Highlands of Scotland. The name Tomatin means Hill of the Juniper Bush. Tomatin Distillery was founded in 1897 by the Tomatin Spey District Distillery Company Limited, a consortium of Inverness businessmen keen to take advantage of the success of the illicit whiskey. In 1906, Tomatin production was closed after less than nine years of operation. In 1909, the distillery was reopened by the new Tomatin Distillers Company Limited. From 1914 to 1918, during World War I, there was a shortage of grain which prevented the distillery from producing. In 1956, production was increased from two to four pot stills. In 1958, two years later, production was increased again from four to six stills. And in 1961, production was again increased from six to 10 stills. And in 1964, production was increased again from 10 to 11 stills. 1974, production was extended from 11 to 23 stills, which became all steam heated. It became one of the most modern and largest distilleries capable of producing 5 million gallons, over 22 million liters. In the 1980s, the Scotch whiskey industry suffered hard times, and during this time, the distillery had to cut back. In 1985, Tomatin Distillers PLC went into administration. In 1986, the distillery was acquired by a joint venture between Takara Shuzo Company and Akura & Company. In 1987, Tomatin becomes the largest malt distillery in Scotland, producing 12 million liters a year. In 1997, the company purchases blending firm J.W. Hardy and its prestigious blend, Antiquary. In 1998, Maru Benny bought out Akura & Company, which was then liquidated. In 1999, the distillery is owned by Takara Shuzo and Akura. In 2004, the distillery is owned by the Tomatin Distillery Company Limited, and Tomatin launched a 14 year old single malt Scotch whiskey. In 2013, Tomatin released its first peated expression, the Kabulkin Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. The water required in the distillery comes from the Alt Na Freith Burn in the nearby Mana Dilath Mountains, and I know I'm probably mispronouncing that. The distillery uses a louder mash tun, 12 stainless steel washbacks. It operates 12 stills, six wash and six spirit out of the existing 23 for an annual production volume of around 5 million liters per year. Around 80% of the production goes towards blends such as the Antiquary and the Talisman, and about 20% goes towards single malt Scotch whiskey. The Tomatin sample pack was purchased for 23 pounds from the Tomatin distillery. 
It includes the Tamatin 12 Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, which is aged in bourbon and sherry cast, bottled at 43% alcohol by volume, and a full bottle costs between $34 and $36. It also includes the Tamatin 14-year-old Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, which was aged in bourbon and tiny pork cast, bottled at 46% alcohol by volume, and a full-size bottle, 750 milliliter, sells for between $55 and $69. And finally, the pack includes the Tomatin Legacy Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged in bourbon and virgin oak cast, bottled at 43% alcohol by volume, sells for about 24 pounds in the UK. It's not available in the USA, but that would sell for about $29. So about six years ago, when I first got into whiskeys and was reviewing whiskeys, I thought, you know, an affordable way to sample a lot of different whiskeys is to buy little bottles, little sample bottles. So I bought 108 of them, had them shipped over from the UK, and I bought some uh, locally here in California as well. But I learned as I continued to study whiskey that several bottles have their advantages and disadvantages. One of the advantages is, obviously, uh, without having to buy an entire bottle, you can buy small samples uh, and save yourself some money. And while there's not a huge selection of these bottles here in the United States, uh, you can, say, through... Uh, the whiskey exchange or somewhere else uh, buy a whole bunch of these small bottles for an affordable price And so get to sample a lot. However, as I started buying large full-size bottles as I have behind me I discovered there is an experience in understanding whiskey that can't be experienced with these small bottles which is a, a whiskey or most whiskeys will develop from the neck pour as you work your way through the bottle particularly peated whiskeys I say more so for uh, peated whiskeys that change after the uh, neck pour is much more dramatic. You know, other bottlings, maybe not so much, maybe bourbons, not so much, uh, but peated but whiskeys do. However, uh, you know, it, it can be very, very expensive buying all these bottles, not to mention they also take up a lot of space. And, you know, these little bottles, other than just sampling, uh, can be quite handy if you're uh, tra on travel, uh, picnicking, some sort of situation in which you need just a little whiskey to bring with you uh, along the way. So they're very, very, very portable as well as being affordable. So just as I would do, let's say, with a neck pour review or a sample review, take my notes in context that this is a sample review and a fresh opening or neck pour from a sample review. So it's a first impression, and I wouldn't make a total judgment of a whiskey based on this, but I think it is a good sort of uh, preview. Just as, you know, a little trailer doesn't tell you the, everything there is to know about a movie, and sometimes the best thing that's in a movie is in the trailer, and you see the trailer, the trailer looks good, then you see, watch the movie, and the movie's kind of meh. You know, or sometimes a trailer doesn't live up to the reputation of, of how well that movie was really, really done. So maybe the trailer isn't that great. So you just have to kind of put it in context in that way. So, no, I really like Tomatin Distillery. They have a particular mouthfeel to the whiskeys, sort of a round, full-bodied mouthfeel to them, somewhat creamy, uh, silky. Now, I haven't even tasted this yet, but having visited the distillery and already, you know, uh, reviewed a number of different whiskeys, there is a sort of general character to tomatin drams uh, to be sort of gentler on the mouthfeel regardless of what the abv is even the cast strength has a sort of round mouth silky mouthfeel all right Whew. it's a very fruity up front the malt character really kicks in tropical fruit citrus lemon and lime apple vanilla cardamom baking spices Usually when I'm recording a video, I've already gone, you know, a third of the way through the bottle. So it's not my first impressions you're getting in a video. I've already uh, sampled it many, many, many times. So this is a unique video in which you're getting a, not only a neck pour, not only a sample review, but a very first impression of a whiskey. There's sort of a dusty, powdery sugar character there. Some baking spices, stone fruit, tree fruit. Maybe a little bit of uh, caramel, just a little bit, plus a little bit of butterscotch on the palate. Mm. Another thing I like to do before I record a video, usually I like to try with water and try with a little bit of ice. So I have an overall impression of the whiskey and how it performs. This, just doing the neck pour. So I'm not 
coming to the whiskey with that prior knowledge and prior experience in doing this video. As I stated, and as expected, Tamatin has this particular silky, round, almost slightly oily uh, mouthfeel to it that I really, really like. I, I just, it has a nice, comforting mouthfeel to it. Uh, definitely the nose is confirmed on the palate. Tree fruit, tree fruit, I talk about apples and pears, but these are baked apples and pears. Stone fruit, uh, a little bit of uh, peach, um, there's some vanilla going on there. There's a little bit of citrus there, maybe just a hint of orange. The malty character definitely shows up on the on the back end. There's a little bit of that sort of powdery sugar character, some confectionery sugar, you know, that gets sprinkled on uh, cookies and stuff like that. Moderate length finish. I would say moderate length developments. It's not a huge development from the front into the middle and into the finish. Moderately sweet up front, nice and malty and tangy on the back end. A really nice whiskey. Again, as I said before, first impressions of this whiskey. Now, there are some other channels that all their videos, such as the Whiskey Vault, all their videos are neck pours. You know, they, they get a bottle from some magnificent bastard, they pop the cork, pour it, taste it, give their first impressions, and boom, all their videos are in that fashion. For me, I like to give more of a, a more steadied uh, uh, review of a whiskey, but this is a unique experience on its own. What is really, really gonna be interesting is, um, I'm gonna then approach these again later, perhaps in a, in a live stream uh, following this video, and then I'll be able to sample it again and see, even if just this little, uh, little experience, even if just, you know, this little bottle having opened up uh, between this and doing a live stream, if it's changed, if my impression has changed, at all. All right, let's go on to the next one, the 14-year-old. Now, the first thing I noticed about the 14-year-old, without even looking at it really close, is the color is a little bit different, being a port cask. It has, I can just see from here, a slightly red wine character to it. I don't know how well it's gonna pick up on the camera, but there is a slight red tinge to this. It has some orange color to it, but it definitely has a slight pinkish tinge to it, almost like a rosé wine. On the nose, some moderate intense uh, fruity note, uh, fruity um, berry fruit. We're talking plums, blackberries, maybe some strawberries, maybe a little bit of cherry. Definitely that that red wine uh, port cask uh, um, influence on there. It has a nice maltiness going on there. Some vanilla, slight baking spices. Perhaps a little bit of a chocolate covered raisin. That hint of that sort of that powdery sugar character is there as well on the palate. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. One more. Like the first one, it has that, I I'm gonna call it a classic tomatin mouthfeel to it. So, which is to note, because if I'm ever doing blind tasting and I get that mouthfeel, it could be a clue as to who the producer is. Now, you can get a mouthfeel like that uh, from a blended whiskey. Adding grain to a malt will give it a more silky mouthfeel. However, uh, these whiskeys are so overtly malty, uh, I think that would lead you away from thinking it was uh, a blended whiskey because a malt is so intense. So, just from texture and yet the high malt content, if you were tasting this blind, you would think if this is a blend, it's a very high malt blend, but I think it's very clearly a, a, a malt and not a blended whiskey. Very rich, black fruits, red fruits, plums, raisins, blackberries, blueberries, a little bit of strawberry in terms of the, the red fruit. The port is definitely making its presence known. I get a little bit of uh, vanilla, some spice, and there's that sort of that slight chocolate covered raisin character to it. Uh, this is sweet uh, from the front, in the middle, and into the finish. Uh, a really, really uh, nice dram. Between these two, I'm gonna say thus far, I'm preferring the 14 year old. I'm a little bit more in the mood for a sweeter dram. Uh, having had dinner just a couple of hours, I got ready for a little bit of dessert. But this is uh, really quite nice. Alrighty, so I want to drink a little bit of water, take a little bit of a break, 
So when you're doing a number of different whiskeys in a lineup, uh, what you previously tasted uh, may still be on your palate, uh, but even more so it tends to be on your mind. So it's, I find it's more of a clearing of the mind uh, than it is of the, the nose and the tongue. So want to take a little, uh, drink a little bit of water, perhaps take a little bit of, of a break, or uh, perhaps eat some uh, crackers. You know, what you eat before, what you had before uh, can affect your uh, perception of a whiskey. So a couple hours before this, you know, I had dinner, that, even though it was two hours ago, could still be lingering on, even if I don't taste the food. But it did, mood-wise, put me more in the mood for something a little sweeter, you know, a little dessert. Uh, so it probably contributes to one of the reasons why I like the 14-year-old so much. All right, so we've done the legacy, done the 14-year-old. Now I want to get into the 12-year-old. A little bit more stone fruit. It's similar. It's not radically different from the legacy. I'd say the legacy seems younger, seems to have more citrus. This has more uh, apple and pear, and a little bit more stone fruit. The spice is definitely popping on there, distinctive maltiness there. Some vanilla, some baking spices, but it's definitely showing that it has a little bit more age than the legacy. The legacy, I would say, sort of pops in a freshness, sort of vibrant fashion. Uh, this is showing at least a little bit of age. Apple pear, perhaps a little bit of peach. So you're going a little bit more into uh, the stone fruit range where I would say the legacy by comparison is more on the citrus, but we're going to do a side by side in just a second on the palette. One more. Like with the legacy and the 14 year old, that distinctive tomatin mouthfeel and maltiness on the back end. Tomatin typically has a sort of round, creamy texture to it that I really, really, really like, even in a, a, a younger whiskey. I was on the nose, uh, so on the palate, a little bit more apple and tree fruit, uh, a little bit more stone fruit, the vanilla, a little bit of uh, baking spices kicking in on, on the back end. Uh, it starts off a little bit more sweet on the front, dries and get a more of that cereal multi character on, on the back end. The only one out of these three that remains sweet all the way through uh, is the 14 year old. All right, now I'm going to do a side by side between the legacy and the 12 year old. C compare, you know, what is the real difference between the two and which one perhaps is a better buy? Uh, and because one, the legacy is going to be cheaper than the 12 year old. The legacy. The differences between these two is not radical. It's just a minor tweak. The legacy, as I said before, has more citrus. It's a little bit more vibrant. It seems a lot more youthful, and yet it doesn't have the new makey characteristics that I don't like in some whiskeys that are too young. 12 year old, it's going more towards apple and, and a pear, uh, less citrus, and a little bit of stone fruit. Similar in finish in terms of uh, it dries more towards the back end, a little more of that cereal multi character on the back end. So, starting both of these starting off sweet, go a little bit more dry towards the back with a very distinctive um, multi character uh, of single malt and that sort of creamy. Uh, oily uh, mouthfeel that all three of these have that I really, really like. Now, what I'm going to give these in terms of a score. Uh, for the Legacy, I'm going to go a solid 85 uh, points. 85 points. The second one I had, which is the 14-year-old, I'm going to go a solid 88 points. And for the 12-year-old, I'm going to go a solid uh, 86 points. Uh, so, uh, you know, only a couple points difference between these three. Um, Price difference is a little bit more significant. Uh, if money is not an issue, I'm definitely gonna go for uh, the 14 year old, uh, or if you're looking for something in the profile of having more of the uh, blue and red fruits, and that sort of chocolate raisin uh, character on the back end. Price wise, you know, if, the, if, um, if both of these are available, if the Legacy and the 12 year old are available, and you have a 20, 30, whatever a difference price wise, I'm actually probably gonna lean towards the legacy 
because the quality is there and the price difference uh, isn't necessarily uh, justified in the difference between the two. I know there's some people who are age statement, you know, uh, fundamentalists. And so because it has a state, age statement, they're going to go with the 12. But in terms of the quality of the whiskey, I think the legacy is actually uh, quite nice. Um, I've not found the legacy in the U.S. market. I'm not saying it's not here in the U.S. I've just not seen it. Search around on the Internet. Uh, it may be a UK, maybe EU uh, only uh, available uh, bottling, uh, but I think all three of them are really, really, really nice. Uh, if you're at the distillery or at the whiskey exchange and you're wanting, looking for a little nice sample pack, something you can travel with, you know, maybe give as a gift or something like that. Or if you're new to whiskey and you're starting your journey and you, you know, not want to sell out hundreds of dollars on full bottles, you want to start something a small, uh, this is a really nice way to go. Uh, if you're an experienced whiskey drinker and you're looking to just build a collection, yeah, obviously uh, this is not something uh, you're going to go with. But hey, a stocking stuffer for Christmas, you know, something to put under the tree, a little gift pack to give uh, to someone. Uh, I think it's really, really nice and definitely worth uh, the money that I spend on it. All right. Uh, if you like watching my videos, you've not yet subscribed, ask you to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for when I go live or post a new video. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.